Uh, talking about what uh, what uh, Twitter is doing and, and what is going on. And I was, you know, I guess I wasn't shocked. I'm not shocked anymore by, by anything that happens on Twitter, but, but surprised, a little bit surprised by the extent, by the passion, by the extent of those that would want to nationalize Twitter. You know, so people are talking about, ooh, Twitter is colluding with the government. You know, so what, what's the solution? The solution is we should have the government take them over. Well, that'll stop the collusion, right? It's just, just bizarre thinking like that. I, I, you know, I saw all over the place anarchists who want more government intervention and uh, in big tech and and uh, more controls over big tech and what big tech can do. I saw conservatives, libertarians, anarchists, all arguing anarchists slash libertarians, all arguing for for more government controls. Yeah, somebody somebody says on the chat, Tim Pool, uh, who's got a huge following on YouTube, wants to nationalize Twitter. I wonder if if Tim Pool will have a platform if uh, if the government nationalizes YouTube, where he has I don't know millions of followers. I wonder how long he says something that pisses off the authorities before he gets slammed. So it it, it truly is. Uh, shocking to me. You can be against what Twitter did. You can oppose it. You can even think it's so bad that you're never going to use. You can boycott Twitter. It's completely within your right. And, and it makes sense for many people to boycott Twitter, to switch to a different platform, or to get off social media completely. I mean, you know, life did exist. I know many of you don't remember this, and some of you were too young to remember it. But life did exist before social media. So you could just uh, leave social media. You, don't, you know, it's not like you have to have an alternative. You, you don't have to have an alternative. The alternative could be to actually socialize with people live, maybe in the post COVID era, because now it's illegal. Uh, it's stunning to me, the, the degree to which people have principles until the principle is tested. Private property is fine until it's inconvenient until you don't want those people to have private property until you don't get what you want. Right? So here's the bottom line. I mean, I said this yesterday on the show, and I really mean this. I think this is an important point. I am so happy to live in a country where a private company can ban the president. That's freedom. My ability not to have to listen, not to have to give the president a platform on my platform. That's freedom. You couldn't do this in China because in China, all social media is monitored by the government so that all that is said in social media has to be okayed with the authorities. And if the president of China wants to release something by social media, God, nobody's going to stop him. If you stop him, you go to jail. In Iran, you can't do that. I suspect that in Russia, if Vladimir Putin wants to say something, you give him a platform. You clear it out. You make it possible for him. So if you want 1984, 1984 is what many of you want, what many of you are asking. By forcing Twitter to do the government's bidding to do your bidding, to, you, to, do, to do your arbitrary bidding, to deny private people the ability to control what appears on their private platforms. That's 1984. China's 1984. Twitter banning Trump is the opposite of 1984. It's exactly the opposite. It's exactly the ability of individuals to say, no, I don't want to deal with the president of the United States. I don't want to deal with powerful politicians. Powerful politician could call up any TV station and they will take his, take his call and he can talk to them. He can, I'm sure even CNN would answer the phone and let Donald Trump talk. He can put out a press release and every newswire will carry it. The idea that somehow this is silencing anybody is absurd. The idea that competition constitutes 
you know, only other, I mean, it's such a narrow view of competition. It's a typical status view of competition. That competition it constitutes something, uh, you know, narrower that other, all it is is other social media platform. No, competition is any means of communication. And there's tons of competition. So I will get to Paula. We'll talk about Paula. Um, so the idea that, and I saw this a lot on Twitter yesterday, uh, the idea that Twitter banning the president of the United States and banning certain conservative voices, and again, I, 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 I'm not even talking about are they justify? Is it good business for them to do it? Twitter's a business. I don't know if it's good business. I don't know if it's the right decision. I mean, in the case of banning Trump, I think it probably is. But in the case of banning a lot of other people, in the case of not being consistent, Twitter is not consistent. Twitter is biased. Twitter is politically, culturally motivated. But Twitter is a private company and has every right, every right to be biased. The media is biased. Fox is biased. CNN is biased. They're all biased. So Twitter is a biased and I, I, you know, I wish that if they were going to ban Donald Trump, they should also ban uh, the, the, uh, the Ayatollah Khamenei uh, in Iran, who calls for, for, for death and destruction. They should be banning other dictators and autocrats, and they should be banning Antifa and some people on BLM and anybody who is advocating and inciting violence, left or right. But they don't. They're not consistent, which is sad and unfortunate. It doesn't deny them the right to make those irrational decisions. It doesn't deny them the right to be biased because, again, it's their platform. And it's not about charity. Objectivists give less charity than leftists or conservatives. I don't know what... Oh, that's charity, charity. Oh, wait, I thought charitable here. Sorry, I was confused. So, you know, this is not, these are private companies, private platforms. You know, they created what they have. They, you know, somebody worked really hard, somebody hired programmers, raised capital, took the company public. Twitter's not done great public because it's, particularly without Trump, because it's not clear how Twitter makes money. Its advertising platform is not as robust, anyone near as robust as a Facebook or others. It's got lots of users, but it doesn't make a lot of money. It struggled to try to figure out how to make money. I think banning Trump is, is, is going to be problematic for Twitter from a money-making perspective because a lot of people were on Twitter because of Trump. He brought a lot of people to the platform. But, but that's, again, their decision. But think about the fact that this is private property par excellence in a sense that somebody made the investment, somebody did the work, somebody created the software, somebody created the platform. It's not a public square. Now, I don't believe in public squares. I don't believe anything's a public square. But okay, you can imagine a public park where the, the government has planted the trees and planted the lawn, and so it's public, supposedly we all own it or something. And therefore, anybody should be able to say anything they want there. But even that's not true, right? If I stand up and start telling pornographic stories, guess what? The police are going to come and take me away. You can't just say whatever you want, even in a public square. But Twitter is the exact opposite of a public square. Private individuals, private capital, private investors, private workers, private entrepreneurs built, created, made... Twitter. It's, <laughs> I don't know what private property would be. What's your definition, how you would define private property? 
if Twitter doesn't qualify as private property. Just because a lot of people use something does not make it public, which basically means, you know, Ayn Rand said, public means that nobody owns it. Just because a lot of people use something does not make it that nobody owns something. It's, it's truly horrific. Once you reject the idea that Twitter is a private company, that Twitter is private property, that the platform is private property, then you reject all private property. You reject the whole idea. Now then people tell me, but it's a monopoly. No, it's not. So by my definition of monopoly, there is no such thing as a private economy. It's, you know, it, uh, a monopoly is something protected by government. Like the post office, that's a monopoly. Try, try distributing first class mail in the United States and you'll get arrested by the government who protects the monopoly the post office has. And FedEx and UPS have found ways around it that are being legalized. But basically, it's a monopoly. But Twitter's not a monopoly. Twitter has no government protection. If, if you start a competitor to Twitter, it's not the government that is going to decide whether you survive or not. It's the marketplace. And part of that marketplace are your suppliers and your vendors and the other people with which you deal. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder. Please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.